Design takes many forms and has been a part of our lives since Eve told Adam to move my sitting rock over there. No, maybe over there, away from that snake that won't shut up. Now, while Eve may have been the first designer, she was followed by the Eameses and others who became famous for their artistic taste. One artist whose curves and edges helped shape the 20th century design world delivered his craft in the abstract. Isamu Noguchi, artist, designer, and sculptor. While yes, those areas of work can overlap, Noguchi was so skilled in each that he found a way to carve his name into all of them and with notable success. One of the best ways of thinking about Noguchi in terms of innovation is his refusal to adhere to perceived boundaries. From industrial sculptures like this one in Detroit to tables, to lighting and technology, Noguchi walked his own path. Born in 1904 to a Japanese father and an American mother, both cultures permeated his approach to creativity. The Henry Ford's chief curator, Mark Ruther, and I met to discuss some of Noguchi's most memorable artistic innovations. I recognize that table. That's a very famous table. It is very famous. That was designed in the late 1940s. Isami Noguchi was friendly with George Nelson, who had been taken on as a lead designer at Herman Miller. That table was the primary outcome of that relationship. And what is the table called? It's called by aficionados collectors as IN5050. But really, it's the Noguchi table. I mean, it's, it's associated with him and his name. I think it really does, in a way, get to Noguchi's mentality. Why shouldn't sculpture be useful? Or why shouldn't something that's useful be seen as sculpture. So it does, it shimmers between those worlds. How influential was nature in his work? I'd suggest it was fundamental. <laughs> I think in a way he, he saw himself a bit like Jackson Pollock as of nature, you know, that in essence you're part of it. But having said that again, he, he, he liked Newman, he liked technology. He was at the forefront of using things like chrome plating. So I think one way or another, the world and its materials, all of these things, that, that was all part of his sculptural vision. What are these? This is a baby monitor system. It's recognized as the first baby monitor. This would be plugged in the room where your child would be hopefully sleeping peacefully. The other unit would be in your rather chic living room whilst you, I don't know, play bridge or something. This is a radio transmitter and that's a receiver. And in the 1930s, this is 1937, you know, that is pretty groundbreaking. That reduction of a technology into a compact form like this, that's quite an achievement too. Well, I see Zenith behind yeah, here, Zenith the company, the company. Zenith. Yeah. So, we once had a Zenith TV. Right, yes, yeah, as a consumer a device, and Noguchi was tapped to design the receiver, the radio nurse, as it was called. And beyond the aesthetic, this is a technological breakthrough. Oh, it is, absolutely. Did he do lamps? He did do lamps. In fact, that's probably for many people, perhaps the most affordable way into owning a Noguchi sculpture. After the Second World War, he was very much involved with Japanese companies producing lamps using traditional materials. So rice paper, glued rice paper, bent bamboo, nice merging of the traditional with a new technology. Um, they're called Akari lamps. A contemporary of mid-century luminaries like architect Buckminster Fuller and industrial designers Charles and Ray Eames, Noguchi himself leaves an illuminating legacy.